All right, everyone. So for our first lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves a free WordPress account. From what I showed you previously, all of those websites that I made were with WordPress. And the great thing about WordPress is you don't need to download, you don't need to buy the software, you don't need to download it and install it on your computer. It runs on the actual web server, on the internet. We're not going to get to the point yet about having, you know, victorsdesigns.com. That's the part that's not free. We do have to pay for that, but not WordPress. We won't have to do that until about the end of February. What we will do instead is we will be able to create a pretty fully functional WordPress website for free with our own domain name that does exist for people to, to look at. But the only catch is that instead of our name being, you know, the name of your website, instead of it being victorsdesigns.com, it's going to be victorsdesigns.wordpress.com. It'll still be fully accessible by anyone that has a, a laptop, desktop, mobile phone, whatever, but it's going to have a name like that. So, in order for us to get that, that's our first lesson and it'll be our first homework assignment. Let's all open up our web browser, whichever one you like, and let's go to wordpress.com. And again, we'll look at every step of the way. If you have no experience, you're going to get a lot of experience. If you already have some experience in web design and such, perhaps a little bit will seem, a, f a few things will seem maybe a little old, but there's definitely going to be a lot more new information. So the first thing we see here is, well, there's an advertisement, create your website for free, it's mobile ready, there's hundreds of designs, you can get a lot of power, etc. And this is and look at this stat right here. WordPress powers 23% of the internet. So one of the wow, biggest software. Yeah, one of the biggest software that people use to make websites is 23% WordPress. Well, 23% sounds like a small number, but how many websites are there in the world? Millions, millions, and millions? Maybe even billions? I don't know. A lot of websites. 23% is a lot of WordPress websites. So at the top here, let's click Create Word, uh, create Website. And it says, okay, what's the name of your website? Don't be confused by the terminology. You're going to see this often on WordPress.com about you're going to make a blog, post to your blog, 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 whatever. Don't worry that it uses that terminology. Just think of it as your website. And we'll talk about the differences more in detail later about blogs or websites. You can, but you have to pay, I think, between 18 and $20 per year. So for us, just at the beginning, this should be fine. And then a little bit later on, once we get more advanced, we'll, we'll actually be able to take it off. Okay. Um, so here... But you will help us take it off. Yeah, that'll be part of the, part of the material, definitely. So here, uh, we're going to make this name. Uh, you could think already to use the name for your company or whatever organization, or you can put your first name, last name, whatever. Um, I do have to say that it's a little tricky to change this later, so perhaps what you could do is put the name, like let's say, just for practice, let's do it this way, just to make it easy. Let's do CIS255 and then your last name. Or we can, can we do one if you already have an idea? You yeah, you, you could do that, but if we do it this way, we could still claim that other name later. Okay. So right here, we just want to create a main account, and we'll be able to add more accounts to it, more websites. Okay. We can totally do that. Hopefully, your name is not taken, <laughs> um, but if it is, then think of another way to write. Yeah, to add some numbers there. Um, spelling and capitalization, or capitalization, I mean, does not really matter. But, you know, just for readability, you could put a capital letter there, whatever, but I'm going to keep it all lowercase. And yeah, I'm going to have to settle for the moment. Uh, CIS255campus.wordpress.com, but later on we can make it just CIS255campus.com. Go ahead and click Create Your Blog and continue here. And it says, here's what we got so far. Your site's address is going to be that. 
put in an email address that you will be able to get notifications at. You, we want to verify that we are creating this account. So it should be an email address that you'll be able to access at some point. And then username, what I would do is just put in the same address that you have at the top, meaning the CIS255, your last name. So you'll be able to log in either with your email or with your username. And I would say make your username the same as your address. No, your password is whatever password you want. Oh, okay. uh, something memorable. Okay. Yep, so create a password and then click next step. All right, so notice here I get this little ad in step three of five. Well, here's how we can get rid of the name WordPress. If I do want CS255 Campos, I can pay $18, and that'll be $18 per year. Oh, okay. I don't recommend to do this, however, because in my experience of the over a decade that I've been doing web design, it's much better to, to get your website name at one of the providers that I'm going to recommend. I'm going to later on talk about you might want your website on Bluehost, GoDaddy, HostMonster. You know, there's a bunch of them out there that specialize in this. So I don't recommend to, to buy your name here because also the version of WordPress that we use here is slightly limited than the version that you can get over at GoDaddy or, or Bluehost or wherever. And anyway, you don't need to, so you don't need to buy any of this. Just click no thanks at the bottom. And then right away here, step four, we have, okay, what uh, theme, what design do you want for your site? The great thing about WordPress is I can create a home page, a contact page, and about page. And then whenever I want to switch the theme, meaning switch the layout and the design with the click of a button, I can start with that theme right there called sequential, you know, purple. And then later on, I want a different theme, a different style. I just switch it over to Boardwalk, and all my content is still there. It automatically goes into the right place, but the site has a brand new design. What do you think about paying for premium ones? Is that okay? Or? That is useful. I do that. My company does pay sometimes for premium themes. But then what we do is we take that premium theme, and then we redo it. We take the framework of it, and then we customize it. So that is legitimate, sure. What I'm going to say here, um, you can choose any design that you want. Uh, for the moment, I'm going to choose a basic one, and later I can change it. So I'm going to choose this one called Minnow. I think you guys see different ones, and that's okay. But if you see one called Minnow, go ahead and, and click on it. And if you don't, choose another one if you want. But I recommend choose Minnow. If you see any that have a dollar sign on it, those are premium themes. Don't buy any of those just yet either. And then step five, which plan would you like to use? There's beginner, premium business, and notice the best one is the free one, right? So $99 per year, that's kind of pricey. We'll be able to pay 
around $50 to $70 uh, over at GoDaddy. Here on WordPress, you have to pay the $18 for the name and then the $99 for the, for the server space, the hosting. So that's over $120 on WordPress. And it's almost half at Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever. That's why I said don't worry about buying your stuff here. We'll do it on a, on a real provider. And um, at the top, uh, we're going to select free, but of course there's the terms of service, the thing that no one reads but everyone agrees to. Um, go ahead and click select free on the, on the left side here, never expires. That's good, you can have this website forever. But you could also shut it down too, right? You could. Yeah. Once you've outgrown it, you can you can shut it down. So then we get here to this interface. Mine might look a little bit different because I've got a different kind of monitor, but do you see at the top left my sites, reader, and then on the top right some icons? Uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get acclimated to moving around these different screens in a bit, but I want to see. I want to preview my site. What does it actually look like? So looking at our interface here, how do you think you actually look at your website? View site. Perfect. Go ahead here and click view site. Because right now we're looking at the dashboard or the control panel behind the scenes. How it actually looks like to people is under view site. So there it is. There's my, there's my uh, basic WordPress site with um, there's the Hello World, the theme, not that flashy yet. If you play with the size of your web browser, for example, if you shrink it or expand it, the, web uh, the, the website shrinks and grows to accommodate a screen. That's a very popular ability in, in web design nowadays. This is known as responsive design. That means that the website is going to respond to the monitor that it's on. If it's on, on a nice big widescreen monitor like these 19-inch ones, it'll fill it pretty well. If it's on a smaller one like that, it should fill it well. If you're on a tablet or a smartphone, you know, it'll look good on your Android or iPhone too because it'll shrink. It'll respond to the size of your screen. Notice also at the top, there's your address. So you can start giving this address to people right away. We've got a website now. Now we've got to design it and use it. We've got that website. But if we want to go back and maybe change the home screen or add an About Us page or whatever, we have to do this. Hover over on the top left where it says My Sites. Just hover, don't click. Hover over it and click on WP Admin right here WordPress Admin WP Admin takes you to the dashboard the administrative screen and notice you get a little welcome message with a video you can check that out later on the left side you got all of these screens that we're gonna look at in detail all of this all of this power of of WordPress to create links and pages and posts and comments and we can have users we can have people subscribe to your website no problem right out of the box in the old days in Dreamweaver and other uh, ways it was difficult to do that now it's built in so yeah we'll look at all of this stuff but what I want to look at first is the very last item settings hover over settings and click general settings and then general here's some general settings to set up on our site that we should change for example right now my site is called CS 255 campus actually maybe I want it to be called something like Victor's designs you know put a real name right there under site title that is not changing your address, however. Your address is still going to be cis255campos.wordpress.com. That's still your address. But now when people visit your site, it's going to have that name, whatever you write there. And here you can write capital letters, spaces, apostrophes, exclamation points, whatever. So write a site title.
in a tagline. We'll probably rewrite this a little bit later, but the tagline is something that we should write one sentence that explains what your company is, what your website is. Take that opportunity, for example, if you've got a slogan or a catchphrase, like think about some slogans and catchphrases for some big companies. What's the, what's the slogan for McDonald's? I'm loving it. Oh, that's what's the slogan for Burger King? Have it your way. Have it your way. Isn't it sad we know these things? Advertising works, right? Uh, what's the adver uh, what's the slogan for Sports Chalet? Yep, you probably have to sing the song to remember it, right? Yeah, take it to the limit. Nike. I forget that one. But anyway, tagline here. Write some sentence that describes what your company is about. And right now, if you don't have a great idea for that, no problem. We'll work toward making a, a good slogan as the time goes on, as the semester goes on. But if you've got some sort of website with a name that is like, you know, what are they about? What do they do? You know, if I tell you PMD Interactive, what do they do? Well, under tagline, let me show you that example here. I can write uh, web design firm in San Diego. You know, that works. It's not like a jingle, but it, it works to explain my website. Later on, when we get much more into SEO, meaning getting found by the search engines, all of this stuff will matter a lot. Because what if someone is on Google and they search web design company in San Diego? Hmm, that's what I'm about, and I could get found. Um, nope, it shouldn't affect your SEO. The actual content of it is the most important. Uh, so I would take advantage to actually write it human readable, like when people see it, instead of search engine readable. So I would write it something like that. Now, slogans and taglines like McDonald's and Nike and et cetera, et cetera, um, usually are not created in two minutes like we're doing right here. They're created in, in weeks or months or even years, and they cost thousands, if not millions of dollars. Um, so you don't have to have an amazing tagline at the moment. It can always be edited later. And of course, uh, we'll have an assignment later on where we talk more about the branding and the marketing of our company, thinking about slogans, thinking about marketing material, like mission statements and all that stuff. That'll be later. Time zone. Where in the world is UTC zero? Anyone know? Greenwich, Greenwich Mean Time, which is England. We're in the wrong time zone here. So what's our UTC offset? Any nerds out there know? Well, never mind. You can put here Los Angeles. Change your time zone to Los Angeles, and there's cities all over the world. So just type, click on the time zone and start typing LOS, and that should take you to Los Angeles. The point of that is when you post something, some blog content, for example, it'll have the right time zone. It won't say that you posted it at 2 in the morning if you posted it at 4 in the afternoon. You can change your date format if you want, but I'm going to leave that alone. You can change your time format also, but I'm going to leave that alone. Week starts on, I'm going to leave that alone too. Language. This is the language that your blog is primarily written in. So if you're going to be writing in Spanish or Hebrew or Japanese or some other language, you can change that. If you want to change the icons to be in Spanish or Japanese or Hebrew, that's on this different screen over here. I'm not going to go on that screen at the moment because I'm going to keep that in what English. If you want to do it in at the same time, that's a little more complicated because we have to have uh, the background set up so that it can give the right language at the right time. So we'll, I'll look into it to give you some advice on that, but um, that one's a little more complicated. Mm -hmm. When you make any changes on any screen, the first thing you should, or the, the thing you should do after you're done with all of that, of course, is save. So don't forget to save this 
uh, this screen here. We'll look at all of these screens, but for the moment, let's look at discussion. Under settings, go to discussion. And this is the thing about WordPress that people really like, that um, people will be able to comment on your site, if you choose, of course. Um, so this is great. Yeah, definitely. Like, if you are, have a product uh, or a portfolio or something and you want people to comment on it, here's how we can set it up. So let's look under discussion here, and um, I'll get back later to this first section about article settings. Don't worry about these just yet. You've got other comment settings. Comment author must fill out name and email. That's good to have because you want to prevent spam. The good and the bad about comments is the good is that people can come to your website, comment on your website, and that eventually is going to help your SEO. If your site is active, if people are visiting your site, if people are commenting on it, when someone does a Google search for you, there's more chance that you're found because your site is being used and it's relevant. But the bad of that, of course, is that trolls can come to your site, write bad things, harass people, you know, all of that. You, we've all seen YouTube um, comments, right? We don't want that on our on our website. So a little bit to protect ourselves is that, that a person must fill out a name and an email. There's other protections we'll activate later, but that's one of them and it's already on. Notice another thing you can do is the person has to register for the site before they can comment. That might be useful. I'm not going to turn it on yet, but we'll get back to that one. Uh, don't worry about closing that one Registered yet. Registered with WordPress? Is that what that means? They're going to register technically on your site. Oh. So right now they are registering on WordPress because your site is on WordPress.com, but later when we set ourselves up on GoDaddy, they're going to be registering on your site. So don't worry about comments and breaks. Uh, that's fine. Email me. So the email that we set that we used a little while ago is going to be the email where we're going to send where we're going to get these messages sent to us. So when someone posts something new, I want to know about it. Um, if I have to moderate a comment, I want to know about it. If someone likes the post, I want to know about it. If you don't, you can turn any of those off. I'm going to leave them on, but you can turn them off here. This is a good one to turn on. Before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. That's what I'm saying to prevent the spammers and the scammers mm -hmm. and the trolls. Uh, I'm going to get an email that says someone commented, and then it's going to have on the email, approve, deny, spam. Yeah. I can click spam right away, and it never shows up on the site. No comments will show up until you approve them. So mm -hmm. go ahead and turn that on. And then previously approved, that one's fine. WordPress.com also has this uh, this more uh, anti-spam ability called Akismet, and it's all, it's turned on here saying uh, strict, meaning the worst uh, spam that it detects for you. You're not even going to be bothered with it. It's already just going to cancel it out. If someone writes, you know. Great website. Click here for free, cheapcanadianmeds.com. You know, that kind of stuff will be <laughs> thrown away right away. You won't have to deal with it. Uh, this other moderation thing, that's, uh, that's fine there by itself, what it says. Um, don't worry about that. That's good. Then we've got, if a, when a comment contains any of these words, then make it moderated. So, for example, if there's some some words that you don't want people to write on the on the site until you approve it you can put the words there the, the problem with that is that if you just write press that will also target wordpress so i think that's a little too strict it's going to even block words um that might be too generic so i don't really use that but that's available with, with uh, black spaces. 
I think it still counts because it, the example here says if you even type word, if you type press, it'll still target WordPress, and there's no space between word and press. It's a little too strict. There's other ways that we can do this, but I usually don't use that one. Um, there's also the comment blacklist. So if that one, you don't even want to be bothered about them, you can put those keywords in there and they'll block it right away. You won't have to moderate it. But again, it's still a little draconian in that if you simply type press, it'll still target WordPress. WordPress makes it easy for people to subscribe to your blog to comment on your blog, to follow your blog, all of that stuff. So those two that are on there, I would leave those on, and I'll go into more detail about it later. Don't worry about Markdown at the moment, that's sort of like writing code in a way. We'll talk about it later. Avatars, this is fine if you leave it as is, it's just showing that when a person writes a comment, they'll have a little icon instead of an empty man or, or whatever, you can change that if you want. Uh, what's your site about? Is it fallen under any of these ratings? You can change that if you'd like. Uh, what is the default avatar? If do someone doesn't have their own icon, it'll just be the mystery man. You can have these ones where someone will get like a little retro uh, video game character. We'll just leave that as a default. And then at the end of uh, at the end of your posts. It'll, it'll have a spot for people to comment on the post, and it'll by default say, leave a reply. Maybe you want to say something like, comments? That's the text that will appear where the people will be able to comment. So you can change that if you want. I, I kind of like this better than leave a reply. That makes me think it's like email. This is not email, it's a post. So if you change any screens of course remember to save so let me show you examples of three ways that you can use uh, WordPress. You can use WordPress as purely a blog website. A blog website is one where you post stuff on a regular basis. So here's my personal blog. I, I collect comic books and I like to go to Comic-Con and I have a blog where once in a while I, I show off a comic book cover and do a little video about it. So this website of mine, it's, it's using a purely blog layout or a purely blog um, method for WordPress. And what I mean is that on the home page, what you see is the latest blog post. This was posted January 11th. A little preview and then read more. And then the next one before that and then the next one before that, and then, you know, you can go to the older post and look at that one, and look at that one, and look at that one. So that's a classic blog. The latest content shows up first and pushes the older content down. Wow. That's one way to use WordPress. The opposite side of that coin is like this example of this client. I work for this restaurant called the Kiestix Coco. They're in Chula Vista. Uh, they are uh, over on 3rd Avenue. They do, uh, uh, they're a Mexican food restaurant uh, specializing in traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. So we did this website for them. It's in WordPress. This website on the home page, it has, actually I got that backwards. Okay, ignore this one for the moment. What I meant to show was this one. This one of Italianissimo is also WordPress, but on the home page, it's just a home page. There's no blog here. There's one static home page that in this case shows a picture and the phone number and a slideshow, but there's no blog here. So one side of the coin is a, a WordPress website that you post blogs on a regular basis. The other side of the coin is 
It just keep it static. The home page doesn't really change. In the middle is this one, where you've got stuff that doesn't change that often and a blog at the same time. By default, what we have when we create a brand new WordPress site is like my personal one, where it's you post something new, it pushes the old one lower. So what we'll, the last thing that we'll do, because time's running out, is we'll post, we'll make one new blog post, which of course we can delete or edit later. When we come back next time, we'll talk about changing the kind of website to, I want something like this. I want a website that is a static home page. And if I want the blog, it'll be on a separate screen. So what this page is showing, my personal one, it's showing blog posts. And what this one of Italianissimo is showing is pages. These pages don't change. That about page is not going to change all the time. The contact page is not going to change. But blog posts do change. You add more blog posts. So our WordPress site on the left shows that. Posts and pages. So we'll talk about it over and over, but again, a page is a screen on your site that doesn't change. Like an about page, a contact page, whatever. And then posts are pages, or posts are screens that change on a regular basis. This week I'm going to blog about this thing, and next month I'm going to blog about that thing, and, um, and so forth. So what we'll say here is hover over posts and click Add New. Under Posts, Add New. You get the editing screen. There's a title section to write here. This is our first day of class, so again, we can edit this, we can delete this later. But let's write My First Day of CIS 255. Or you could write whatever you want, but if you follow along, that's best. My first day of CIS 255. You've got then a, a text area uh, down here. Click there. And it's similar then to Word, where you can write paragraphs and put pictures and bullet points and all of that. So we're going to write today was the first day of our new CIS 255 uh, web search and uh, web search engine visibility class here's what I learned so just write a, a sentence something like that and what we're gonna do is we're going to write a few, two or three things that we learned, but what I want to do is I want to make that sort of like a teaser, like a preview of this blog post. Someone visited, visits my page, and instead of seeing the whole five paragraphs or whatever, you only see one little snippet, like my blog over here. Notice it shows cool comic book covers, Johnny Quest number 16. Johnny Quest number 16 published, blah, blah, blah. Continue reading. I'm not going to show the whole thing at once, because I'm going to get a really long home page, too much to download. I have a little preview, and then people click continue reading, which actually shows the video and a little more text. Hey everyone, hey, it's, it's time, time for, for another, another episode, episode of Cool Comic Book Covers. Here we uh, and so forth. So they don't see the rest of the content until they click to read more. So let's do that. You get this little teaser here, type a little text. And then you see this icon here that kind of looks like a, a stripe in the middle of the road? That right there, that's the insert read more tag. That's going to break your blog at that point so that it says read more. In the old days of Dreamweaver, I would have to create a page or a link and then manually point that link to my other page, my other HTML file. But here in one file, one document, I just click break right there, insert more, and it'll do it for me. So click insert read more. Does a little break right there. 
And now here's what you're going to do. Uh, think of three things you learned today and put them in bullet points. There's a bullet point icon right there. So click the bullet point. You might have to press enter two times. Um, press enter. Oh. If you make a mistake, you can also undo because that, oh, that happened. That's what happened on mine. I pressed the button and it didn't work, so I pressed undo. You know, you know undo on the keyboard, control Z, or on the Mac, command Z. So I pressed enter right there. And then bullet points. So you think of three things that we learned today. Take a moment to do that. Of course, uh, I forgot to mention, but as we're working, at any point, if you need any help, raise your hand. Call me over. It's easy to fall behind. I don't want you to fall behind, so. Raise your hand and I'll help you out at any point during any lecture. Yeah, later on when we talk about more advanced blogging, I'm going to say that I would recommend at the minimum of 100 words. And notice at the bottom where we're writing, it tells us I've written 18 words. So I have a few more to write. The more button? Yes, the more. No, any minimum should work. Yeah, uh, when we actually preview it, we're not going to see the more we're going to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, my pleasure. But if you want to edit it, and you see it on the home page, then you can. All right, so um, the cool thing is that we're writing this here in this classroom. And let's say I want to write more because class is running out. At the top right, I have a save draft. So I can click Save Draft. And when I go home, I'll log in again to WordPress.com. And this will be waiting for me so I can continue to work on it. I can click Preview and get a sense of what it looks like in my theme because when I'm in the editor here it doesn't look like how people will see it if you take a moment to click preview well that's how it'll look like in my theme you're not gonna see the read more yet not until we publish it so don't worry if you don't see read more yet but that's what preview shows me and there it is it's in my design I didn't have to design that header or the footer or whatever that's all in the theme which of course we can edit later but here we've got a post yeah, just one moment. Let me answer this question. So on the top right corner, you'll see preview. And as I said, if you don't see the read more, don't worry just yet because we haven't published it and seen it on the home page yet. So let's say there's still a lot of other... Um, All right, attention, please. Yeah. There's a lot of other things we can we can edit, of course, and we'll go into detail. But I just want to write a little something here, and then click publish. We can always go back and edit it. Let's click publish. For me, it popped up that you just published your first post or second or whatever. Did anyone also get that kind of screen there? Okay, if you do, that's fine. If you don't, don't worry. For me, I don't like it because it always breaks my concentration. Uh, but uh, rem uh, you're, the thing to remember is if you hover over the top left, my site, remember, there's, vi there's view site and WP admin. That's how you switch back and forth between editing the site and viewing the site. So wherever you're at, go, bu go back up to, views to visit site, hover over my site, and then visit site or a view site. There's my design, there's that first blog post that was written for me, and if I scroll down there, my first day of CS255, blah blah blah, continue reading. 
So that's where that should show up. Once you've actually published it and see it on the home page, you will see the continue reading. And when you click there, then it changes to show you that one blog post in its completion. If you made a mistake, whoops, I misspelled that, and I wanted to go back to edit the post, <coughs> let's look at that. Hover over my site, go to WP Admin, WP Admin, and then uh, hover over Posts, and this time select All Posts. Add post or add new obviously gives you a new post, but to view everything that you've created, to go back and edit an existing post, you want to go back to posts, all posts. There's our post here, and there's if you hover over a post, you have edit. So you can always go back to edit. If you don't want the default post, for example, this Hello World one, how do you think you get rid of it? A faster way, that'll work, but a faster way is you can hover over and click trash. Professor? Just, just one moment. You could hover over and click here and then click here to delete and then apply three clicks. You can just click trash. That takes it out too. Questions? Okay, no problem. Is check Blackboard. Check Blackboard. Yes, check Blackboard and uh, the homework will be there. Okay, sorry about that. No problem. The class got out at 6 to one. So here you can go back and edit the uh, the post, no problem. So if you wanted to go back and you misspelled something or do more, you can do that. But I think that'll be it for the moment. Uh, what you want to do is get used to that when you go home. So just as an example, I'm going to open a completely different web browser. I'm going to if you when you go home, you're going to go back to WordPress.com. And you're going to click log in. You're going to log in with the username or email you set up and your password. You know, get acclimated with WordPress. If you want to post another post, that's fine. If you want to play with a page, that's fine. But when we come back next time, we're going to talk about pages, images, uh, videos, editing the theme. So we're going to learn everything step by step about WordPress. And then as the semester goes on, then we're going to incorporate. Uh, building a, a plan for our website. We're going to learn the tool, then build a plan, and then learn social media. It's all a process. And this is what you would do for a real client, for your real website, etc. The homework, if, um, if people were a little more patient, the homework is that all you need to do is send me an email with your address. So whatever your address is, I can probably guess it, but send me an email with your address. What's my email? It's on the syllabus. Send me an email with your address, just the address. None of that that has like WP admin, editor, blah, blah, blah. Just your address. That's the first homework assignment. It's due this Friday. It's worth 10 points. If you get it done right now, you're done with the homework. I'm going to put it on Blackboard and this video a little later. Remember to check Blackboard. And that's our first day of this class. So we'll keep doing it. What's that? Definitely, yes. So that's our first day of the class, and we'll keep doing it every Wednesday for 17 weeks. So um, that's it. If you need any help, I'll be glad to help you. Uh, class ends officially at 7.20, but I can be here until 7.30 or so if you need some help. So that's it, and uh, thanks for coming.